So, first, uh, in general, what uh, we do in my lab is trying to predict adverse events that happens uh, during cardiothoracic surgery. So for this, we use the multimodal data with artificial intelligence as example, modeling the time series data of uh, like ECG and other modalities like uh, natural, like textual modalities uh, by modeling using natural language processing, vital signs. So this is the high level VIEM um, research that we do in my lab. Uh, today, I uh, I chose to talk about one research that uh, I published recently. So it's about artificial intelligence for automatic detection of peripheral artery disease using electronic health record data. Okay, so about uh, peripheral artery disease, it's a common circulatory uh, problem where what happens is that the blood, the 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 arteries are uh, get narrowed, and the blood flow to the limbs uh, is reduced, and it's uh, one of the common uh, cardiovascular disorder uh, that is undiagnosed. These are one of the challenges uh, because it's uh, typical symptoms are not reported by patient. So uh, the typical symptoms can be pain in leg or hip when walking, pain in arms, or leg numbness, as example. And the PAD uh, affects 8 to 12 million American adults and more than two, uh, 200 million worldwide. So the limitations of the current uh, models and algorithms that are being used are that uh, they use classic risk factors using regression models, which would uh, limit their uh, uh, feature modeling to demographic data, laboratory data, and comorbidity data. As example, what disease can happen with this uh, for patient that has this specific disease, uh, and uh, so it doesn't. So these current uh, models doesn't. Uh, take into uh, consideration the disease trajectory where lifestyle, as example of the patient and biological factors as genetics were not uh, modeled. So additional limitation is the lack of implementation. And uh, on a survey with uh, primary caregiver, uh, primary uh, physicians, 68% of them didn't uh, measure the ABI, the ankle branchial uh, indices, which is one of the most uh, predictive parameters for this uh, peripheral artery disease. And uh, although 89% uh, of them believe that uh, this, uh, this parameter is useful for the PID diagnosis, and according to the survey, uh, they didn't do this uh, uh, measure, measurement because of lack of uh, time, lack of staff, and lack of financial reimbursement. So, and, and in general, the, the challenges for the diagnosis of, uh, of uh, this PAD, uh, peripheral artery disease, are that 10 to, only 10 to 30% of the patients uh, report typical uh, symptoms of the disease. And uh, the awareness of the of the patients. So, twenty five percent of surveyed adults only demonstrated uh, awareness of this uh, of this disease. So, our goal was in this uh, specific research was to use electronic health record, uh, including textual data and including uh, uh, diagnosis of uh, other uh, disease and vital signs for the uh, improving the ability to automatically detect uh, the peripheral artery disease using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning uh, techniques. And we, as, as I mentioned, we would like to model the lifestyle factors and the biological factors of the patients. 
So in a very brief way, I will explain that the uh, existing research uh, are based mainly on risk factors that are currently being used by the, the physicians. As example, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, diabetes, uh, coronary artery disease, cerebrovascular disease, and other disease that what happens is that today the caregivers, or the, the physicians, uh, uh, use these diseases uh, to try and diagnose the patients. And uh, the, the current work uh, research that existed before the, our, uh, our research was, uh, was using logistic regression that takes these uh, parameters as input and try to detect whether a PAD, whether this patient has a PAD or not. And uh, part of these uh, uh, parameters require significant effort, as example, the hypertension or diabetes. And still these models uh, were uh, had the modest uh, performance as 0 0.6 area under the curve uh, score. Other models try to use NLP uh, by having rules of what concepts that uh, that describe the PAD were uh, existing in the electronic health records, and they report that their models were uh, were able to achieve accuracy of eighty one point eight percent. So I'll uh, I'll talk a little bit about the cohort uh, cohort characteristics that we had in our study. So approximately seventy percent of our uh, cohort was Caucasian. Sixty percent of sixty percent of the P, uh, PED patients were male, and forty percent of the controls the controls that those are the patients that are, didn't have uh, the PED uh, were uh, male. And then uh, uh, we, we found that uh, the PAD patient had a higher uh, uh, burden of comorbidities. As example, 44% of the PAD cases had history of uh, cerebrovascular disease. 72% of them had co uh, coronary artery disease. So, uh, and some other also uh, more frequent uh, disease that uh, happen that that uh, patient of P PAD has these uh, diseases as heart failure, hypertension, diabetes. So what we try to do is uh, to use multiple types of mo uh, machine learning and deep learning models to uh, try and improve the the existing state of the art uh, achievements. So in this case, we we wanted to have a baseline. And for this baseline, we took the traditional risk factors that are being used uh, today in by the, the physicians, and uh, we modeled them using logistic regression algorithm, additional algorithm that uh, we developed for uh, using electronic health record for evaluating how these electronic health record information would help in improving the, the capabilities of uh, diagnosing uh, PAD patients. So we use random forest, which is ensemble learning model that uh, uses multiple, uh, in this case, multiple trees, and then vote which uh, according to the performance of these uh, multiple models and take the decision. Additional uh, uh, models that we use are uh, deep learning models, as example, the recurrent neural networks, which are known for their ability to model sequential data. Since a patient uh, since we need to uh, model the historical data, the visits of the patient, we needed to uh, uh, to have a model that can consider take into consideration these uh, sequential data. So for uh, and and as as I as I mentioned, for uh, accurate prediction, we need to model the the trajectory of the uh, patient, the, the care journey of the patient by using information that appeared in the electronic health records during the visits. So in visits, the, the, the doctor can say, can diagnose as the patient had uh, uh, diabetes or can report that uh, the, the patient is a heavy smoker, as example, 
And on each one of these visits, we have the information that would that might affect uh, the the specific uh, cardiovascular disease that we are trying to predict. So in this case, uh, we use recurrent neural networks. Since recurrent neural networks, uh, uh, the simple implementation tends to forget in long se sequences because of the uh, problem of vanishing gradient. So we used a variation of RNN, which is long short-term uh, memory. And in this case, we were able to model uh, longer sequences uh, uh, of, the, of the data, which uh, made, it, made our model more uh, predictive. So, uh, so we model information over time. So the, I will skip to the next uh, architecture where, we, where I show. So this is the architecture that we used. So one component on the left, we can see uh, the component that models the sequential data. As example, we have the, uh, on each one of these visits, we took the age of the, uh, of the patient on, that, on the uh, visit uh, time. Stand, time. Uh, we took the recency, which is the the distance in time from the time from the uh, date that we are uh, uh, we are performing the diagnosis, and uh, the type of concepts and the concept IDs. So the concept uh, we in Stanford we had like a system that models each one of the disease, each one of the concepts that were mentioned in the electronic health records. So uh, we have the type of the concept and the concept itself. And other information that we want to, uh, to model, uh, which is the component appearing on the right, where we use the fully connected neural networks for uh, modeling the, the current age of the patient on the time of the, of the test or on the diagnosis, uh, the race, the gender, and uh, in this case, we took also the average number of codes because it kind of uh, give the uh, measure of how uh, long have this patient uh, coming to the visit to visit the the doctor. Uh, and then we had uh, in this case we made this problem as binary classification problem since we would uh, uh, decide whether the patient had a PAD or doesn't have PAD peripheral artery disease. So in this case, we we had we did, uh, performed a, a five-fold cross validation, and we can see here that we were able to achieve um, a very impressive uh, uh, AUC compared to the existing uh, algorithms because we were able to use we had we had large uh, data set, and we were able to use the uh, deep learning models uh, that. Uh, can model the journey of the patient, the visits of the patient. And we can see here, we compare here multiple fo uh, folds. Uh, so the, the AUC on the left uh, shows how, shows how uh, good we are in true positive versus false positives. And uh, the graph on the right shows how calibrated these uh, algorithms were. So the closer to the... Uh, the ideal line in the in the middle, uh, the better and the more calibrated the algorithms. And then here we uh, try to understand what are the most predictive features uh, uh, using these um, machine learning models. We were able to do this by, um, by as example, random forest that we used that give, can give us the importance of these features. And we could uh, find that the post-procedural state finding, as example, was uh, one of the features and uh, essential hypertension, abdominal aortic aneurysm, hyperlipidemia, type D diabetes uh, without complications and other. So these are ranked, as you can see, according to the length of the, uh, the blue uh, chart. And then uh, here we report the, the comparison between the logistic regression of the uh, traditional risk factors, the random forest, which was using the electronic health records data and the deep learning algorithm. Uh, as we can see, the deep learning was uh, outperformed the rest by uh, 0.96 uh, in, AUC, in average AUC. 
we can see that we ha uh, it had the highest sensitivity specificity uh, uh, where sensitivity uh, shows our ability to decide for a patient as a positive while he truly has the, uh, in this case, the PAD uh, disease. Uh, and uh, this is in short, uh, the this research and I think we would have a question in the end. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Amal, for your presentation uh, with yours and like Professor